Cubbies do their job and take two of three against the Rangers this weekend. We talk about one very positive takeaway and one not so positive takeaway. Come join us on our program. Eh. Locked on Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy, and you're tuned in to Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please support the show and be a part of the Locked On Cubs community by following on all audio platforms, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion to discussion with you on all things Cubs. Today's Monday episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your own baseball franchise? This game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up in your Apple or Google Play store. Listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On. that's Locked On all caps, in the game for Ultimate Baseball GM. We return to the program as we lead off another week here on the show. Another week in the regular season format. Very exciting. As the Cubs win this series over the Texas Rangers. Two games out of the three. Uh, They win a nice 2-0 ball game Friday. Then they crush the Rangers on Saturday 10-3. Uh, before dropping Sunday's contest, and they will move on to the Mariners on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which we'll preview a little bit later on. Sam, it was a good weekend for the Northsiders for the most part, and would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts today. Uh, A lot of thoughts on this Monday morning because we we haven't done a show in three baseball games. Um, I mean, it felt like I've done a show in about, you know, two to three weeks. It was it was a very productive weekend. They had to win this yes. series. I we we both felt like they were going to. They did. They're four and four heads heads squarely above water. Um, I thought Friday's game was was really one of my probably my favorite win of the year because it was just a classic defense pitching, timely hitting, low scoring, cold April game. Those are the type of games they got to win. Yesterday, excuse me, Saturday was fantastic, and uh, you know Sunday was. A, 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 an F in, in many regards, uh, th- that's going to happen. That's going to happen. It's part of the part of the thing. Te- Texas yeah. is a good team and, and that's going to happen. I, I have one long-term takeaway on each side, positive and negative that I would love to hear your thoughts on from, from, and, and this is from this weekend and it's eight games in, and this is probably too early for this takeaway. This is the positive one, eight games in. Usually I, I like to wait 20 to 25 games to make this. But I, this is good news, and I, I feel good about saying it. And that is I am pretty confident, and this might not sound like much, but it is that this Cubs team is not a bad team, Matt. They are not a bad team. That That, that was my takeaway from, from the last time we've done a show. Uh, and I know people are probably saying, well, you said that all year or all off season. We know they're not a bad team, but we're trying to No, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of experts that do think this is a bad team, right? There, there, there's a lot of people that, that think that this team has a better chance to finish last and finish first. I do not think this is a bad baseball team. How good they are, that is TBD. We will find out. But there is just there's too much pitching. There's too much defense. And, 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 and they care and they play hard. And, 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 and I just, I found myself saying this week, and I just don't see, I just don't think this is going to be like an eight, a high 80s, 90 loss team. I really feel like I can't say I guarantee that because you don't know what happens at the trade deadline. But mm-hmm. go, with, with this current roster, I feel that way. What, what do you think about that? Then I'll get into my negative takeaway. Yeah, I think that's good. You know, I, I, I would say a floor of even where the fan duel over under is would, would, would still even constitute a yeah a sort of called bad season. You know, if they won seventy six games, I think that would be awfully disappointing. Um, sure, I do think the floor is higher than that. Even if it is just maybe you know four wins, you get to the first number starts with an eight. But 
Um, no, I, I think after eight games, I see a lot of encouraging things. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a journey day in and day out. I think our the sound look of the show will reflect that basically every day. Yep. Um, I think many things could be true at the same time, but it's all part of the fun. Um, right, right. But I, I, I just don't see based on – uh, really, yeah, what occurred in Friday's game, which I thought was an amazing game. I, I was actually in attendance for that ball game. Yeah. Uh, left center field bleachers, sun soaked, never even put on my jacket. Um, <laughs> pitching and defense. Yeah. For all the changes in baseball, I don't see how you could have a bad team um, with, with the pitching and defense the Cubs have. Yeah. And, and yeah, go ahead. And you even and you brought up. I think I heard you bring this up. I might have to check the tape. You brought up the the human element, right? There is nothing more dangerous than a team that plays hard and has a good time doing it. I right. don't care if it's my freshman team or the Cubs, but right. if you saw Friday and Saturday's game and reasons they're on the right side of the board. They played their bleeps off and they had fun. Right. And and they are they're four and four right now. They've been better than that. They they, they gave yeah. away Monday they gave away Monday night in Cincinnati, which people keep saying, well, you know, you overreacted to that game. Well, no, because that's we're five and three teams, a whole different podcast. In the moment reaction. Yeah, we're 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 a different podcast right now for five and three. Javier Assad blows the game against the Brewers on the second game of the year with everybody available. Gets crushed today. He 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 might be heading for to, to yeah, Des Moines pretty that? soon. So that's that's a loss that looks like it's kind of eye rolling at this point. You know, you're, the the guy that blew the game might not even be on the team very soon. So they've they've been better than four. They've had two poor games and they both fell on Sunday at Wrigley Field. My negative takeaway is about one specific player. Hmm. And last year at this time on our old show, I had this, I had this feeling, it was a much stronger feeling uh, last year than this year about Jonathan VR. Cause we, we had just got finished playing in Coors field. He was hitting the ball all over the diamond and, and I didn't, it was more after the race series, but I, I didn't like the way he was fielding. I didn't like the way he looked athletically and I didn't appreciate his quality of ABs and I wanted him off the ball club. Now I do not feel like this about this player, but listen carefully what I'm saying. Okay. I, I don't think Trey Mancini should be penciled in the lineup every single day versus right-handed uh, pitchers. Versus lefties, yes. But versus righties because of three reasons. Number one, number one, he cannot play defense. He has to DH. Uh, th that play, he has now made three significant, he's made four really bad defensive plays in eight games. Three in right field, one in first base where he dropped the ball that I probably would have caught without a glove. It looks like he's a hitter only. Yes, and 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 so it's a great great segue to number two. He's a hitter only. That going into yesterday, I think he had one hit, but he he had a four twenty seven OPS against righties. Um, and and I know it's very early, but the eye test backs does not back up qu his quality of ABs versus right handed pitching. That he he has not had many great ABs. Uh, I, I don't recall many extra base hits. Um, obviously, again, eight games in, but I just just off a hunch. And here's the biggest reason. He doesn't play defense. His his at bats versus righties are leaving a lot to be desired, and he's blocking people that really can produce versus right-handed pitching. So we're talking about Edwin Rios, who went deep today. We're talking about Matt Mervis, who's right around the corner. I don't want Trey Mancini taking abs from those guys when he provides no value defensively and offensively right now. Again, super early. That's why I'm not saying he should be benched every day versus righties. I'm just saying we have a group of players, Ian Happ, Nico Horner, Dansby Swanson, Seiya Suzuki, that, that, that David Ross is going to pencil in every single day regardless of handiness. And then we have a group of players that are, you know, the platoon type guys. And by the way, Wisdom should be cl closer to those guys. I, I didn't mention him, but Mancini took ABs away from Wisdom today. Right. And, and I just think Mancini should be on that side where every day you he's a matchup base player, I guess is long story short. I do not think he should be penciled in every single day. I think he should be a matchup base player. Curious to hear your thoughts on that. I think he's certainly uh, off to a cold start to the point where, yeah, just changes have to be made. He can't, he can't be in there as much as he is. 
he had a good weekend, you know, when I was looking at the numbers for the hot and cold, but it's inflated by Saturday's game against a lefty. Yeah, and one of the um, and one of those hits was a pop up that was misjudged. Yeah, so I I don't really see a path to him uh, playing every day at this point, especially given the competitiveness of this team and how important the next stretch of games is, which we're going to get yeah. to in a few minutes. Um, he's definitely one of the players that I'm more discouraged about than than most. Yeah, um, he just doesn't either, look athletic. Yeah, either given his past resume. Um, or just, yeah, the amount of opportunity he gets. I really think that is probably what it is. Yeah. And I'd rather see other opportunities given to other players. Um, Edwin Rios has 10 plate appearances in eight games. And he's going to homer every that's, nine. That's, that's comical, right? He's he, um, he's going to homer every nine plate appearance. Yeah, so I think the distribution of, of, of plate appearances has to change. It has to change now. Defensively, you know, Saya, it sounds like, is coming back Friday, if not sooner. Yep. And so they were trying to sneak in, what, 11, uh, 12 games, now 11 with the rain out this past week. Right. And and I don't know if you could do that at this level, to sneak in a guy for 11, 12 games. Right. And I, I think it has cost them, you know, here and there. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'll just wrap by saying it, because I know I'm going to get beat up in the comments for this. I'm not saying cut Trey Mancini. I'm no, not saying no. he doesn't have value. I'm just saying I think he should be a regular versus lefties and matchup base versus righties. He's he, for him to work out, he has to be one of the top two or three hitters on this team. He after today's ball game, he's hitting 258, 273, 258, and, and which is horrendous. And that is oh, after no. a, a and that is after a three hit game yesterday against the lefty. So right. most of his most of his damage has come, you know, basically yesterday. Um, so I'm just not seeing it. There's no speed there. There's no athleticism. Uh, because one thing I have seen, I've noticed with the Cubs that, that it hasn't been great, and there's been a lot of good, is outside of Swanson and, and Horner, it's a team that really lacks speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. No, I we've talked about that before. They, they don't have many base-stealing threats. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, yeah, but no, okay. That's, so, th that's it. But overall, overall, overall... Very solid weekend. Um, they did a very nice job. Took two out of three. They did what they had to do. We're four and four right now, Matt, leading into to what we talk about next. I had us at five and four. That was that was par. So and, and we're just a game short because that Hunter Green ball game got postponed. So hopefully I and I hopefully we could find a way to 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 to, to win some games here because it gets tough and we're gonna talk about that. Coming up next, what is on the schedule for the Cubs uh, this week and beyond for the rest of the month? Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Baseball GM. This is the coolest game we've played in a long time, and you have to try it yourself soon also. Play through seasons and lead your franchise and fans to glory as you build an historic dynasty. In the simulation, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, scouting and drafting players, and navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. All the Locked On MLB hosts are currently competing against each other, providing a, some good, uh, good nature trash talk. And we suggest that you do the same with your friends. Locked On Cubs listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo. Locked on in the game store, so make sure to check it out. To download the game, visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up in the Apple and Google Play stores. That's probaseballgm.com for Ultimate Baseball GM to start your dynasty today. Today's episode is also brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money right now is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. So Rocket Money can quickly, easily find those for you and help manage your finances and automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. So stop throw, throwing your money away 
Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash lockdown MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash lockdown MLB to help yourself out financially today. Welcome back to Locked On Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day and whenever and wherever you may be listening to this Monday episode as the Cubs are 4-4 four and four on the season, three games with the Mariners. It's going to be Smiley against Castillo, Wisniewski against Flexen, and Stroman against Gilbert. There is 19 games left in April, and we are going to break down some schedule oh, yeah. uh, scenarios right now. So I'll go long-term first, then we'll go to Mariners. These next 16 games are the gauntlet that ended up getting the Cubs last year in April, if you remember. They had a really bad uh, series loss at home to Pittsburgh. Then I believe, it. don't uh, quote me on this, but it was something like at Atlanta, uh, at Milwaukee, Sox, Dodgers, something like that. Oh, where after that, man. after that gauntlet, they were they were done. This next sixteen games, there are going to be losses, folks. It is about head above water. If we could go eight and eight in this next sixteen games, which feature at home against Seattle with the worst, one of the worst possible pitching matchups you can have tomorrow night or or tonight, if you're listening. Uh, between ace Luis Castillo, and by the way, the Mariners lost a, a heartbreaker today, a long game. He's going to be asked to throw 100-plus pitches tomorrow. They they, they, they burned sure. a lot of pitchers. Mm-hmm. He's going to be ready to go, folks. Uh, three against the Mariners, three against the struggling Dodgers, which I don't like because you know at some point they're going to yeah. get wins. and you hope Yeah, you're struggling not- in quotes. Yeah, you, 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 you hope that you're not the victim of that. Right. Then you get a break. You go to Oakland. That's where you got to eat. That's that's nine. Then you got four against the Dodgers and three against the Pods at Wrigley Field. That is a very difficult 16-game stretch. After that, you play the Marlins. You play the Nationals. You feel right. a little bit better about things. That is a very difficult stretch. Head above water. Keep finding a way to win games. Somebody commented very very smartly on here the other day. Said, Sam, Matt, you guys look at the schedule at the end of August. It looks great. Yeah, but the hard part is, is getting to the end of August and being relevant. Keep your head above water. Hang around. A lot of struggling teams in the National League early on. It's early. St. Louis isn't playing a good brand of baseball. <laughs> Philadelphia is struggling mightily. It never works out how you think it's going to work out. So you find a way to be the team to flip it up. So let's break down this Mariner series. What do you think? Tomorrow night's going to be tough. Tonight's going to be tough. Yeah, I think the landing spot is is it happens. Not, it happens. not ideal at all. Um, yeah. You know, in in my breakdown that I'm keeping track of, yeah, I I'm pooling that Marlins series in there. So I I I have 19, but the next 16 is 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 fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, to break that down in terms of the game schedule. Eight and eight, eight and eight par, man, in these next 16. Eight and eight, you hit a nice par. Yeah, and that's going to be very hard. You know, in my hard. original projection, I had one and two against Seattle. Yeah. I know you're going to say they should win two out of three. At home, uh, yep. But even looking at these matchups, it's, 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 it's a, a little hard series. to see a path to that. No, um, don't. Don't you know what I mean? Don't it? Don't scratch your head and say it's. A, if, if I think it's, it's hard to see a path. I I don't think no, they're going to win this series. No, it's going to be very challenging. But but don't go that extra mile and say it's hard to see a path. Okay, we're at home. It's Wrigley Field. It's April against the Mariners. There's no reason we can't steal two baseball games. Well, that's Matt Cozy speak. I've been using that phrase the last you know thirty four. No, I know days. that. But when you say it's hard to see a path to that in Matt Cozy terms, that's saying it ain't going to happen, folks. Well, hey, and and listen, after the after April, I I got the Cubs at at, at thirteen and fourteen. I'd like and to origi- see those- and originally originally before the year we, we you had him at 15 and 13 so that's not great. Right. And uh yeah, now it's down to 27 ball games this month. I I'd like I I really think we got to see a Wisniewski bounce back. Yeah, and you, you know, will. for as for as good as the starting pitching was this week, I did think Tyone gave up just a world of contact Sunday. 
Yeah, that's. The, I don't know how that sustainable up. that is. Yeah, and we could get to that in the hot and cold if you want. Yeah, yeah, we'll oh, get to Tyone but, in the hot but, and cold. But you can't succeed with two starters. No, no, no. So, so, so Ty- Wisniewski's got to step up this week. Jameis and Tyone did not pitch a bad game today. He will be fine. Right. And I, we will get to that in the hot and cold. I have some numbers to back that up. And my, I have a little notepad here. Stroman um, versus Gilbert's an awesome matchup. It'll just be a, a good baseball game. So so, so for Monday night's uh, game. It's Seattle. That's a long flight. For Monday night's game. Yeah, Unless I agree. They were in Cleveland. It's not a great matchup. No, they were. It's not a great matchup. They're a good team. They're, they're struggling a little bit. They got a lot of tough hitters. For Monday night's matchup, it's it's very easy for me to say from this chair because I can't hit major league pitching, and Luis Castillo is not the type of guy you want to get to two strikes on. But if there was ever a night to really milk counts and take as much pitches as you can. Because they don't have a lot of guys available, and, and let him let get if you can get him out of there before the sixth. I feel really good about uh, pulling a little upset tomorrow. And you know it should right. be what's the weather? What's the weather supposed to be like Monday night? Do you know? I, I hopefully well, it's a actually chilly. well, it's supposed to be in the seventies all week here. Oh well, that's not good. I was gonna say maybe it feels a little cooler. It'd be a good day for Smiley to pitch. Were you really not time. aware of the weather this week? I, I'm not. I, I kind of just wake up and let it happen, man. That's awesome. Yeah. If it's going to be in the 70s. No, we went from winter to summer. We skipped spring again. If it's going to be in the 70s on Monday night, forget everything. And if you want to go get, if you want to catch a Julio Rodriguez home or just park up on Waveland. So we'll edit the last couple minutes out. Yeah. (laughs) No, they they, they could still win that game. You never know. Um, Flexen's very hittable. Yeah. Uh, he's not a guy that, that overwhelms you. And the Cubs could get to Gilbert. So it's just really this this Monday night matchup that's a little bit lopsided. That happens. You have a rain out and and you know you you have different right. schedules, different games, and your five runs into their one. So yeah. Uh coming up next, we review some performances from this weekend and talk about uh what we'd like to see from some of these players as the season moves along. Stay tuned. Today's episode is also brought to you by So Rare, another new sponsor for us here on the show. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy platforms, So Rare managers can truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against opponents from around the world to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. MLB game weeks happen twice weekly and span a three- to four-day cycle. At the end of the game week, so rare MLB managers could rank at or near the top of their leaderboards to win a variety of rewards and could win a variety of prizes throughout the season as well. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team of free player cards. Set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. Welcome back to LockedOn Cubs. And we're here for a Monday episode. Uh, Thanks so much for your support. So far this season, in your ears, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and on YouTube, of course, as your exclusive video home of the show. According to the great people at FanDuel, the Seattle yes. Mariners, the, the Seattle Mariners are minus one fifty-five Monday night at Wrigley Field. That's oh that's a, boy, that's a pretty strong spread. But you know what? We have won. You know what? A good spread. We haven't Even won. We're we're four and four, and I believe we've lost two ball games. We shouldn't have lost. We haven't stolen a game yet. Let's steal one Monday night. You know, a get one back. In, a couple infield hits, maybe a blooper here. Maybe the Mariners hitting us some tough luck for a change, and you steal one three two because they always say this things these games even out. Well, I'd like to see it. Do you think the Cubs will ever run any plays offensively, like maybe a hit and run or fake bunt steal or anything? Oh, was I clamoring for some hit and run? Let's get in the hot and cold. I'm not gonna. I'm not going after the manager today. I'm taking a breather on it because uh, hey, I thought he managed. A, thought he managed a brilliant game on Friday. Tucker Barnhart was three for five this weekend. No, Tucker Barnhart's at bats have been very, very solid. They have. 
They have, they have. Ever since I really, that last I really, Saturday I, game. I, I think I'd like to pass on Gomes v. Castillo. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Magical three for eight this weekend. Magical had a good weekend. I thought he was a little bit unlucky on Sunday defensively. People got on him. The, the, the play that he threw away, that was a weird play. Obviously, he should have yeah. just ate it. And then the, the chopper that was hit over his head, like that's that's just him at third base. He's not a tall guy. Um, but I still I still think he's fine there. But his at bats look better. Um, and I'm happy for him. And everybody could 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 come in and, and praise me in the comments because I'm I'm telling you, I, I am satisfied with how Nick Madrigal looks so far this season. He is by no means on the top list of the problems. Nico Horner, four for 12. However, two big double playouts on Sunday. Yeah, N- Nico looks good. Uh, he the, does, the double, yeah. Pl- the double play stuff, I-, I think he's been really a victim of some poor umpiring, uh, uh, okay. especially in. I think when, when when men are on base and Horner and Madrigal are up, and, and I saw the great Matt Clapp, who I've always uh, had correspondence with in Twitter over the years, say this, so I, I, I it sounds like I'm copying him, but I have the same thought, but I want to give him his his due. You want to hit and run as much as you can with those guys. And it doesn't even matter who's on base because right. they're going to hit the ball. So they're not going to get the guy thrown out. Uh, that's going to happen with Horner. It's part of his game. I was The first one I could live with, the second one was bad hitting. Uh, but overall, I think Nico looks really good. How about these two lines from, from your, your top two starting pitchers? Stroman, six innings, two hits, no mm-hmm. runs, three walks, six Ks. Steal the very next day. Six innings, four hits, one run, four walks, three Ks. These guys have really just been a joy to watch. Uh, Twenty-four Stroman, innings. Stroman, twelve scoreless. You know, twenty-four like innings, one earned run from your top two. I mean, it's it's insane, and it's yeah, it's, it's great. It's great, great anchor. And Stroman more so than Steele's really pat. Like like it 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 feels doesn't feel one tick of fortunate. Like he he, he is getting serious movement. Yeah. The jams that he, the two jams that he's pitched out of both these years were really not even his problem, his fault. Um, both these right. starts, I mean. So he's been really good. I'd like to talk about Tyone. Tyone. Can we get there? Or are we? Yeah, and and though for his, those guys were excellent this weekend. Tyone went five, six hits, five runs, three were earned. Yeah, one walk, seven strikeouts. So this is a great conversation to have. So Jamison Tyone did not pitch poorly today. But when you don't miss bats, you are going to be subject to some of these bad luck days. And that's what happened. Yeah. He, he pitched poorly last week. Today, he did not pitch bad. The ball in right field should have been caught by Mancini. That cost him two runs. That, th- there was an error by Hosmer that was inexcusable. Um, and then a little chopper over Madrigal he- Madrigal's head that brought in more runs. Seven Ks in five innings is a good number. I thought he looked crisp. His ERA on the season is six. His FIP, what that means is his fielding independent pitching in layman's terms, what that means is is what his ERA should be when considering the quality of contact he's mm, given up okay. in defense and stuff. His FIP through two starts, two. Two. Wow. Usually by the end of the year, your ERA and FIP come together, and they're usually pretty they're usually pretty close. Uh Jamison Tyone is going to pitch better. I am not. I'm, I want to. I want to have full conviction when I say this. Um, I am not concerned about him whatsoever. His command was a tad bit off again, uh, which is weird because he doesn't walk people and he didn't walk anyone in the spring. But overall, on a different day, that's a six innings, three three runs, one earned, nine K effort. Um, so right. I, I didn't think he was bad. And I just think it was just one of those days, and you're going to have those days. Yeah, he had a, a goofy line because he struck out a lot, but also gave up a ton of contact. Yeah, so. it's a weird line. It's a weird line, but I thought I thought he looked good. Cubs Mariners Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Off day Thursday. Then the Cubs and Sam are off to Los Angeles to play the Dodgers. So oh, I'm excited weekend. about that. Yeah, and and and, and my goal, I, I really would like to, to to sit in that stadium, Dodger Stadium, Shavaz Ravine, if you will. I would like to sit down there Friday night, put my feet uh-huh. up, and, and and be watching a six and five ball club. That'd be good. Um, and that'll be Justin wanna... Steele on the bump on Friday. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Steele Kershaw. It looks like it's not. I think because I, a certain days right. I think I think it's going to be Steele Cindergard, and then I'm going to watch Tyone face Grove. So it should be a decent uh, uh, pitching matchups for the Cubs over there this weekend. So 
Uh, yeah, it's good stuff, guys. Four and four. You know, I I'll leave. I'll leave the show with this. At some point, we have to move on from the April thing and not freak out over every game and just say, "Hey, is this a good team or is it not?" And and, and we have to just start saying, "You know what? Let's let these guys figure it out. They're going to be a good ball club. They're going to get hot at some point because these deck sixteen are going to be tough. We got to hang in there, fight." Don't give away games. Tomorrow, tomorrow is a fun one because we all expect them. And I keep saying tomorrow. I got to be better than that. Tonight, tonight, we're recording on a well, late night. Well, you should just Sunday. use the day of the week. Yeah, yeah. I know. Journal Sorry. Jur yeah. Journalism rules. Yeah. Monday night's game, Castillo v. Smiley. is fun because it's one of the – like I fully expect them to lose the game, but if they could find a way to steal it, that would really, you know, give me a little pep in my stuff. I can tell. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Locked On Cubs content, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And you can drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now make your second Locked On Fantasy Baseball. I finished the first week in our league, Sam. Ten categories, all that action from, from the first opening week and then a full week. Five and five tie. I lost. Okay. Locked on fantasy baseball. Listen to Matt and Dom as they bring you the best fantasy strategies all season over at their program at Locked on fantasy baseball. For Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. This is our program and this is Locked on Cubs.